Did all you jerk-offs find a mob bookie to take a bet against yourself? Because that's the only explanation for what the fuck we saw. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Drex Hawkins Game 2 After Action Report. I cannot believe what we saw. My 92-year-old grandfather almost had multiple heart attacks, and I damn near had an aneurysm. What the hell happened in the second half? We're going to get to it, all of that, and more. But first, let's take it from the top with the first quarter. I'm going to go over briefly what I did in my halftime report. All right, first things first, we had a total of four flags. Okay, I could understand this if it didn't get worse as we go on. But guys, come the fuck on. What is going on with your coordination and your communication? This is ridiculous. The starting opening kick was great. You got it just shy of that end zone and they had to run it in. That's the strategy that you should be doing every time. These new rules make the meta to have a short opening kick every time you got to put that ball back to the other side. This needs to become a regular plan. Man. Garrett, very jumpy, got us that first flag. Come on, buddy, you know better than this shit. Everyone was jumpy. This was madness. It just seemed like everybody was discoordinated and discombobulated on the fucking field. I can't understand after how many days you guys practice together a week, you guys can't get your signals down. Discipline and control are the keys when you're out there on the field, both in defense primarily, but also in offense. Let your enemy get the flags. If they get the flags, it is free yardage for you, and you need all of it, because holy shit. Foreman had good plays. He was moving the ball. I counted in the first quarter four excellent plays from the man. Same thing for Moore. He was strong. He got out there and made three great plays, getting us yardage and moving the ball forward. The rest of you guys, where the hell were you? And on that point on more, he shrugs off hits like a champion, like a real man. He is strong out there. You guys need to back that son of a bitch up every time he goes to make a play because him and Foreman are the only ones moving shit out there, apparently. Watson surprised me. The man actually made some good plays for once. This actually might be a warm-up issue for him. I don't know. He hasn't played too many games as of the last, I don't know, three years because of his own bullshit. And I got to point out right here, Ford has balls. The man might be small, but he is not to be trifled with with those larger guys. He can hold his own out there, but he needs backup. Where were you guys while he was doing the heavy lifting? You're going to let a man who is a quarter smaller than you actually do shit when you are as big as you are? Come the fuck on. Ford had an excellent 16-yard play, and he pushed again and again. On a second and eight, number 88 had a hard but smart play off on the side. This is what you guys need to do. When you see an opening, you go for it. Watson got sacked one time in the first quarter. That is a big improvement from what we saw in the first game, where the man was on his ass more than on his feet. Actually scoring a touchdown. Good. You are paid $50 million a year to win, not to lose. 21 had a great save with a minute 44 on the clock, and I count 15 plays to our first quarter. Not bad, but it could be better. Second quarter continues off the first. Moore continued to take big hits and keep going. Watson actually scrambled. That is the most I have seen that man move other than running from lawsuits. He made a good throw and Cooper fucked it up. Get your shit together. You were this close. I've seen porn stars take further shots than that. Get your shit together. Hopkins had a 53-yard kick. Good as always, but you know what? Kid, your accuracy is starting to falter. Those kicks are winding up way out by those exterior poles. You need to practice zoning that shit in. Get it as dead center and dead line as you can. No crooked shit, no off to the side, dead on, dead on. The flag on Hopkins kick in the second quarter was bullshit. You can fight me on it in the street, and it should have been a turnover. 88 had good sportsmanship. I don't see very many people offer a hand to your enemy. I hope he spit on it first, though. But you know what? You should always help your enemy after he just had the honor of being shat on by you. And then we get to one of the biggest failures of the second quarter. Jag 1 was let through. Where the hell were you guys? An elephant could have twerked 
worked its way through that hole in your line. Pull your shit together. Emerson was a nut hair away. He was that close. But you do not get credit for close. You get credit for winning. Nuff said on that one. And Koromoa had a blitz. That was hard and fast. Excellent play, and we need more of that. Overall, first half defense was strong. You bullied them in that first half. That pass to Ford with seven yards on was insane. 63-yard total according to my numbers. That is madness. We need to see extreme plays like that. We need to see hard hitting on the offense. That's the kind of shit Browns fans want to cheer for. Watts' communication was on point and his movement was good in the first half. And drawing out the clock was a legitimate smart strategy. Make sure that you draw it down until you can get that field goal in. If you do, you get the points. But if you don't, it comes right back to you in the second half. Garrett came around the side with an excellent tackle, just demolished them. That man has control of the field when he is present. Now we get to the second half, which can only be described as ass suckage. Did you guys decide that if you can't be first in winning, you were going to be first in losing? I'm sorry, but last place is not first. Actually, I'm not sorry. Your second half sucked so hard it could pull a golf ball through a garden hose. Bell went out from a hard hit early on, and from the looks of it, it looked like he was holding his arm originally, but all of a sudden, it was on the stretcher, and he was holding his leg. Who knows what happened there, but hopefully he makes a recovery, and he's good to play here for the third game. Koromoa was attacking. He was going for it hard and strong. That is what we need to see. The rest of you guys should kick salt. This was fucked up up. Hicks stepped up for a sack, but I wish I could say the success continued because it was all downhill from there. 2-20 and 20 was an utter loss of momentum and a collapse of our line. What happened? Oh, I know what happened. An additional 10 flags in the second half for a total of 14 flags. I don't have enough fingers. I got a fucking foot up here to actually give you the goddamn numbers. I thought 10 was shitting the bed, but holy shit, somebody took a dump in the locker room water filter because you guys fucking stink. How can you give up that many yards for flags? You guys are professionals. You guys have how many years playing college? You have how many years in the NFL? Combined, you guys probably have over 100 years worth of experience on that team. And you are telling me you want your fucking incompetence to be on full display to the world. Okay, from 10 to 9 on the clock, the defense just continued to falter. Emerson was a slow to get up player. I hope he's going to be in there for the third. But to be honest with you, it was looking kind of iffy during the day. Garrett came in when needed, but it just wasn't enough to make up for the abject failure that we saw out there from the rest of these assholes. The defense seemed to finally come back at 550, but they were only saved by a bad kick. You cannot rely on your enemy to screw up. It's good when he does, but it is not the objective of your playtime. You need to get out there and make your time count. Anyone can see this. From four down to three minutes in the third, we almost came back. At 2.40 on the clock, Watson failed to pass three, maybe four times by my count. It was too difficult to see because I was busy tying a rope to the rafters because of your abject stupidity. Our defense finally broke when we took a 66-yard route. I don't think we have seen a retreat that bad since World War II. Defensive Failure. That is all I can say on that. And to top it all off, Watson ended the third with a second sack. Our fourth quarter was barely better. Barely. That flag cost us a sack at 12 minutes. 
I've seen people with Parkinson's that have better coordination than you. At 10.40, we finally turned it around and got ourselves a good sack, pushing it to a second down and 18. That is the shit that we need more of. You need to keep the pressure on. Do you think Patton slowed down to take a lunch break? No, he kept going forward. From 10 to 9 minutes on the clock, we were just handing it over to them. You guys just decided, you know what? We might as well just go ahead and lose because we're already on the downhill and you gave it to them on a silver fucking platter and said, here you go, sir, would you like more? The only thing... The only thing that saved you was a fucking flag. I haven't seen that many people running around like chickens with their heads cut off since fucking COVID. We had multiple third and 10 conversions and Watson made a bad two and eight pass. It was too high. Who are you throwing this to? The fucking ISS? Watson made two good passes to Judy, but the man has the consistency of Joe Biden's speech pattern. Get your shit together, man. The 601 holding flag was at least enough to break up the monotony. At least it wasn't a starting issue. Judy went to work at four minutes. Holy shit. The man is out there running his ass off with no one around him. And to top that, some guy named Winston actually made a push. But then... Then, they somehow, somehow fucked up so royally much that they wound up at 3 and 36. Third down and 36 is a fucking shame. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. If this was the 1936 Olympics, you all would have been lined up against the wall and shot. Someone finally decided to make a pooch kick, and that was the good call. That was gold. And Wright saved the day with that sack. Holy shit. We were never going to get anywhere unless that play was made. We would have been screwed. That forced the Jags to make a sky-high kick. We would have been screwed without that sack. And to wrap it all off, we burned our timeouts. And let me just come back around to that pooch kick really quick. Borquez has control over his kick placement. Everybody we have needs to take notes on control. I'm almost wondering if we should have him out there more often. And it looked like there at the end, the 54 walked off hurt. And I can tell you what, Garrett was exhausted. He looked spent. All right. To summarize, it looked like you were trying to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. It's a good thing that you guys just somehow fell off the cliff too fast. If it wasn't for late game mistakes by the Jags, we would have been screwed. I think I speak for a lot of Browns fans out there when I say that we question whether or not you are in the game. You get paid millions of dollars a year, and some of us wonder whether or not that has gone to your heads. Just because you are guaranteed pay does not mean that you guys can just give up. Because when you took the lead, it looked like you thought it was easy street and you guys could just sit back, collect a paycheck, and everybody would just clap along like fucking morons. Well, guess what? We're not, and we are watching. Those penalties that you got killed us. I hope Kevin Stefanski isn't as incompetent in the locker room as he sounds on TV because somebody needs to chew your ass when you are failing to get you to move. This is a sport about momentum and discipline, and it was an abject failure of both in the second half. But don't just take my word for it. Let me know down below what you guys think of the Browns so far, because I tell you what, it was an improvement from the first game, but barely. They were ranked lower than us. The Jags were not supposed to be that big of a contest, but I tell you what, the Browns looked like they were fucking struggling by the end. I can't understand it. Maybe somebody else has some insight. Please let me know your thoughts. I love to hear them. I've been Drex Hawkins. Thank you very much for watching the Drex Hawkins Game 2 After Action Report. Have a good one, my friends.